Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to session 26 of Principles of Management course. I am your instructor Dr. Shikha N. Khera from Delhi School of Management, Delhi Technological University. Students, we have been discussing in past two sessions about leadership. Today we will continue the same. In this case, we will be discussing today various leadership theories that the forerunners in the leadership arena in academic field have given to us. Let us dash into the job quickly and understand since it's there are too many theories that we have to understand. So starting off with leadership approaches are primarily categorized into three categories trait, behavioral and contingency. We shall be going in detail of all the three theories one after the other and also if there are some sub theories in each of these categories. But generally speaking if I may explain the premise of all these approaches, the trait approach is based on different characteristics and traits that an individual carries. These traits can be acquired traits that is you get acquisition of communication skills, you develop a particular knowledge, you develop technical know-how, all these are acquired traits and they are something heredity or inherent traits also like your bodily features, personality, height, weight, look, appearance. So all these things which can be gained through biological inheritances. This is the pretext of trait approach. Now how is it connected to leadership? We shall be discussing during the discussion. Second category is the behavioral approach. Now behavioral theories are based on that irrespective of the trait of the leader, it is the behavior of the leader towards certain aspects. It can be towards production, it can be towards people, it can be some towards some other considerations. So the behavior of the leader is most important in devising the leadership style or making leadership effective. The third category of theories which is about contingency theories, they say that Behave, the leadership is a phenomena of situation. So it is the situation which governs leadership and based on favorableness or unfavorableness of the situation, the leadership style may be opted or the leadership may be executed. So let us try now to understand in detail different theories. So first theory of leadership is the trade theory. This trait theory focuses on leader characteristics. What are the leader characteristics here? Leadership theories assess success and failure based on leader characteristics. So a leader can be a successful leader or a failure because of these traits. Dimensions which are considered under the trait category are physiological dimensions like appearance, weight and height demographic dimensions like age, education and background and intellectual knowledge decisive fundamentals. Third is the assessment approach. Leaders are rated based on these dimensions to predict success and failure. Leadership trait study basically focuses on that experts conduct studies on physiological demographic and intellectual dimensions. What are dimensions here? They are nothing but the traits of the individual leader and they try to understand the correlation between these traits or dimensions and leadership effectiveness. This is how this theory came into existence to find out what is the relation if someone has specific traits. So if someone has effective communication skills or good technical knowledge or has a charismatic personality as a leader, does it affect the leadership effectiveness and if yes, then what is the magnitude of that effect? So practical application example is an example scenario of a store manager using various strategies like promotion, training programs and open door policy to effectively manage employees based on their traits and 
performance. Also this approach takes care of preventing redundancy. So prevents redundant training and optimizes the uses of employees time which is very important. Highlights the importance of tailoring leadership approaches to individual traits and needs as needed by individual that is catered to based on their requirements. Now through research conducted though a lot of research is being conducted in last three decades not the 20th century a set of core traits of successful leaders have been identified and they are not essentially solely to identify whether a person will be successful leader or not but they are essentially seen as preconditions that endow people with leadership potential. So what are the core traits that have been identified over past two decades? First is the achievement drive. So high level of ambition that a person has or the energy this is one of the traits that has been devised. Then leadership motivation and intense desire to lead others to reach to the shared goal. Trustworthiness, honesty, integrity are further characteristics or traits along with self-confidence and believing in oneself's ability. Cognitive ability which is basically the good judgment part and analytical ability, conceptually skilled ability is what is required or which is identified as one of the core traits. Coming further, knowledge of business is another important trait which we call as conceptual clarity. Also emotional maturity is one of the traits which adjust well and does not suffer from severe psychological disorders. So this emotional maturity is required on the part of the leader. Then other characteristics can be creativity, charisma and flexibility. So what we have talked about are these are different traits or core traits that anyone who is a leader if possesses can have good leadership effectiveness. Now likewise any phenomena trait theory also has certain strengths or weaknesses. Let us quickly see the strengths of trait theory. So it is naturally pleasing, intuitively appealing and aligns with common perception. So this is a theory that people have that intuitive appeal because of which persons may listen to you and they listen to you thus leadership effectiveness can be achieved. Since this trait also validates the foundation, it is backed by research providing a solid theoretical basis, grounded theory is also there. Thus trait theory is a very strong or relevant theory. There are often criteria to assess leadership traits in individuals. So we have yardstick also to assess that is a strength of this theory. Coming on to having a detailed knowledge that is an in-depth understanding of leaders role in the leadership process. So all these then become the strengths of trait theory because of which leaders may follow this theory to achieve leadership effectiveness. But as every coin has two sides, leadership, trait theory also has its certain limitations. So what are the limitations? It may have subjective judgment. What is subjective judgment? That is something pertaining to an individual. So here determining what is good or successful is very having a biased or personal or subjective approach extensive trait list. So a vast number of traits were identified leading to general generalities but this can be a question mark that how can we have a group or cluster of traits which are more effective towards leadership. Disagreement on importance so that means on which traits are most, most crucial for effective leadership is an important aspect people will not agree that all the traits are important and then identifying what is the cluster which is most important is a tedious task or a controversial task. Coming on to relating to physical traits attempts to relate physical traits like height, weight, appearance to leadership effectiveness may not be universally applicable so this is one of the criticisms of the theory. The theory is complex and may not provide a straightforward guidance for how to move ahead with leadership trait theory thus it has high amount of complexity because of which then it becomes challenging to adopt this particular theory in the organization. 
There are certain implications of trade theory also. It provides constructive insight into leadership as it is giving constructive information on various traits. It is applicable across all the levels relevant for individuals at all levels in the organization because it pertains to their characteristics. Self understanding for leader is also there as leader gains a detailed understanding of their identity, personality and impact on others because of the characteristics or traits they carry. Thus, they understand themselves well and once they understand well, they can self evaluate and rectify their behavior as and when required. Leadership quality development, so it helps managers inculcate leadership qualities in individuals because by knowing the specific traits, they can even acquire those traits. By acquiring traits, they can have better qualities inculcated in them. So this is all about the trait theory students. Now we are moving on to the next theory which is the behavioral theories of leadership. Now this basically encourages participative decision making and it focuses on collaboration in leadership styles. So these are the basic traits of behavioral theory. It emphasizes on the behavior of the leader in terms of task and relationships. So the premise here is the behavior of the leader with which all targets of the leader can be achieved or all jobs can be done with high effectiveness. So it describes leadership as a result of behavior rather than inherent traits. Focuses on specific behavior of leader to understand leadership influences success. Now here students, one important aspect you should remember is as in the trait theory, there were specific traits. In the behavior theory, there are specific behaviors of the leader which can lead to success. Key aspects of behavioral theory includes studies the leader's behavior and action plans emphasizes on leadership styles over inherent qualities. So rather than inherent qualities, here the focus is on leadership styles and examines the impact of leadership behavior on the success. So what are different advantages of behavior theories? There are value col collaborations, encourages leadership styles that emphasize collaboration. If we can quickly recollect, we have discussed three styles of leadership, autocratic, participative and democratic and in the three we have already seen that these two are the ones which focus on collaboration so value values collaboration because of the behavior involved in it of the leader for participative leader also behavior was important and for democratic also behavior was important in the positive uh, connotation towards the members it promotes participative decision making so we have already discussed here Team development focus highlights the importance of team development as in the case of free reign or laissez faire style of leadership. So this was free reign style of leadership. Self evaluation of managers, it helps the managers to assess their leadership style and its impact on the team and balances in leadership style that is it assists manager in achieving a balance between different leadership styles. So say here students what we have tried to find out, we have tried to find out why behavioral theories are of having some importance that is what are the advantages of behavioral theories. Coming on to the next part that is the other side of it criticism or arguments which are against the behavior theory. So here authors or researchers mention that limited guidance in different situations. So it provides minimal guidance on effective leadership in diverse situations. Since it is only based on behavior here, situations are not talked about. So thus that is a limitation of this theory. Inconsistency in the research. So research outcomes they vary and leading to inconsistency. So what do we mean by inconsistencies here? 
because of research on various behavioral leaders it has been found that very limited data is available with respect to effectiveness because of specific behaviors only and no other contingent variables are or other variables are contributing to it dependence on situational factors so leadership styles are dependent on the situation and environment which is missing in case of behavioral theory it doesn't talk it is very much silent with respect to situation and environment and there is no universal leadership style we all must agree to it that no single leadership style is deemed universally effective in all circumstances that means if you are an autocratic leader definitely a situation is there because of which you may have to behave as an autocratic leader if you are participative again there must be some situation if you are a free reign leader again there must be a situation so no single leadership style is universally effective so thus it is it has some gap area with respect to the behavioral theories now that we have discussed about the concept of behavioral theories criticism and advantages for the same let us move on and understand what are different behavioral theories in leadership which are most prominent ones so we shall be discussing th three theories of leadership Ohio State University studies management grid by Blake and Mountain and Likert's management system So what is Ohio State University study Ohio State University study talked about two dimensions one dimension was initiating structure and the other dimension was consideration this initiating structure can be high and low similarly consideration can be high and low so what is initiating structure all about initiating structure is about the task to be done the methodology to be used in the task the roles and responsibilities of the task to be done so the manager here sees to it that if he has high initiating structure he will focus on delivering or giving a clear instruction on task to be done procedures have how the task is to be done evaluating whether the task is done properly or not and along with that focusing on the performance of the subordinates if he has low initiating structure then he will not much bother about what the task is and how it is to be done on the other hand the second parameter that this theorist ohio state university have talked about is the Uh, consideration for the people in consideration for the people compassion empathy and sympathy plays a major role thinking to it that what is more important for emotionally also in personal life and professional life of the workers so if it is high that is high consideration for people then the manager leader is more concerned about people and their issues or challenges if it is low then the person is more of task oriented and he is not empathizing much with the people in the organization so let us see how it is drawn ohio state university with two dimensions of initiating structure as high and low and consideration high and low here we draw this diagram as low and high people consideration and low and high initiating structure so i'm writing is here for initiating structure so we have then four quadrants here in this we have low initiating structure and high consideration here we have high initiating structure and low consideration in this we have both initiating structure and people consideration as low while in this quadrant we have high initiating structure and high people consideration so this is the most important style or most important factor which needs to be considered in the behavioral theory given by ohio state university so what does it reflect it reflects the behavior of the leader the ideal behavior of the leader should be that he should have focus on initiating structure also and focus on people consideration as well second theory in behavior is managerial grid by blake and mountain now here blake and mountain talked about two axes x axis and y axis where one axis was about concern for people and the other axis was about concern for production 
and they said that on the basis of intensity for concern for people and intensity for consider uh, for concern for production there can be five anticipated styles what are these five styles based on behavior of people behavior is in terms of magnitude low to high consideration for people and low to high consideration for production so let us see what are these two dimensions concern for people in uh, the managerial grid given by blake and mountains reflects the extent to which a leader prioritizes the needs and interest of team members while concern for production represents the leader's focus on achieving task goal and productivity so here we come up with a visual representation of leadership ranging from five different styles let us see these styles i shall discuss this in the next slide this is the managerial grid which is made and these are the styles first style here you can see concern for people from low to high and same concern for production is from low to high these figures 1 to 9 show the intensity of particular characteristic here we have first quadrant this one as one one style of leadership which is called as empowerist management then we have nine nine style which is nine one authority obedience style then one nine style of leadership which is also called as country club leadership and then nine nine which is this one which is called as team management style and in between the fifth style is five five leadership style which is also called as middle of the road middle of the road style let us discuss these five behavioral patterns of this grid in detail so the first style which we mentioned one one grid is called as empowerist management and it focuses on avoidance and escapism you are neither concerned for people nor you are concerned for production nowhere you are having any enthusiasms so leader with this slide uh, style are considered very ineffective they show low concern for both people and production and concerned about preserving their job and seniority they avoid responsibility and innovation and leading to dissatisfaction and disharmony the 91 is also called as dictatorial style or produce or perish style when we say produce or produce or or perish means that you either work hard or you go away from the organization so based on mcgregor's x theory leaders follow this style seeing employees as means to the end they prioritize production over people and believing strict rules and procedures leading to organizational efficiency next after this is the country club style which is 19 that is yield and comply now with this style leaders have high concern for people as we can see here 9 is for people but low concern for production so they are not much concerned about the yield they prioritize and need the comfort of the team first and they keep on motivating them thinking that this comfort will motivate them well but this in turn they, this leads to lethargy and because of which people under produce so this may lead to a friendly environment and may not necessarily result in higher productivity or otherwise it leads to lower productivity the next is team management that is 99 style of leadership which is contribute and commit where we have considered the most effective style according to blake and mountain leaders with this style exhibit high concern for both people and production so they say that contribute with the commitment based on mcgregor's theory why it emphasizes on enablement commitment faith and respect and believes in developing a team atmosphere that leads to satisfaction motivation and higher production but somehow it is uh there is a question mark to achieve with this kind of precision having concentration on both sides appropriately the last one is the 5 5 which is generally the ideal kind of style middle of the road that is balance and compromise so balance in terms of production and compromise with respect to the 
people in the organization when they require your help. So leaders in this style aim to maintain a balance between concern for people and concern for production and they strive for suitable performance but may comprise on each dimension to some extent only. So how this managerial grid that we have just now discussed helps the organization? It helps leader identify what is the level of their concern for people as well as for production and also useful for self-assessment of the leader. But one of the drawbacks of this particular trade theory is that it overlooks the environmental conditions. So this is a bit of critical comment towards the theory on given by Blake and Mountain by in the managerial grid. The third theory under behavioral approach that we have to study is Likert's management system. Now Likert talked about four different variants by which the managers work. What are these variants? Let us see them. First is exploitative authoritative. Authoritative we understand one who dictates an exploitative term itself is self explanatory that they are going to only focus on the production part. So in this system decisions are made solely by the supervisors or superiors and negative motivational techniques are employed. Negative motivational techniques like deduction of salary, demotion or transfer to a very small area or the area which is far off from your place or maybe laying off or retrenchment. So here subordinates must comply without input and there is little consideration of their problems. So there is no idea sharing, they are not talked about, they are not given any platform to share the inputs and also their problems are not taken care by the leader. Second type is benevolent authoritative under the Likert's management system. In this style it uses positive motivational techniques such as rewards which is contradictory to the exploitative authoritative system. While top management feels responsible there is limited upward communication and decisions are primarily imposed from the top since it is an authoritative approach. So decisions definitely are imposed from the top but one of the good traits here is that it has a positive motivational approach rather than the negative approach which is there in exploitative authoritative. Next two under Likert's management system are consultative and participative. The term suggests much so consultative means subordinates are motivated through rewards some involvement in decision making although lower level opinions are considered key decisions are still made by the seniors of course because they may be the critical decisions so that they keep in their hands but some smaller or routine decisions are given to the consult to the subordinates and the consultation is taken here upward communication is more compared to the authoritarian style which is one of the good traits about this style of leadership. Then participative uh, content in Likert's management system talks about that superiors have complete trust in their subordinates. If you remember we discussed trust in the previous session on leadership styles. So here and monetary rewards motivate the subordinates. So trust play a major role. This system encourages responsibility at all levels. So this is a gain of the system that when people are self-responsible organizational achievement ex in terms of effectiveness is high. So with the highest level of communication between superior and subordinate another great characteristic of participative style of uh, management or leadership Likert considers this system the most effective for achieving organizational effectiveness. So if the question comes that what is the most effective style of managing people or under the behavioral theory by Likert, you need to mention that participative style out of other four remaining three are consultative and authoritative exploitative and relevant. So out of these participative style is the most appropriate style. Before we proceed and discuss about the third theory category that is contingency theory, I would like to highlight here some kind of similarity and differences between two theories that we have discussed till now that is trait theory and behavioral theory. So in trait theory focus is on the leader part that is traits of the leader and behavior of the leader. 
that is the commonality between the two theories if you have certain characteristics either you have personality traits or behavioral styles you will be effective later in any situation this is what both the theories talk about then differences between the two theories says trait theory says leaders are born while behavioral theory says that leader can be made so that is a different between the two selection is important for trait theory as we have to judge what all traits they have they are possessing while for behavioral theory it is the training which is important so if we want to develop a trait leader we need to select appropriately and if we want to develop a behavioral leader we need to train them appropriately Now coming on to the third category of theory that we have to discuss today that is contingency theories. So we have numerous theory, six theories today to discuss. So or I want all of you to be quite attentive since they are theories based on different parameters and we have six in number. So this may you know give you some kind of diversion in between. So please all of you be alert and let us start discussing these theory. Quickly naming them, first one is Tenenbaum and Stingmitz leadership continuum, then situational leadership model by Hershey and Blanchard, Fedler's least preferred co-worker contingency theory, path goal theory and leader member exchange theory and Verome Yetten's contingency model. Let us start with Tenenbaum and Stingmitz leadership continuum. Here managerial characteristics might include the manager's value system, confidence in subordinate and personal inclination and feelings of security. This is what we are talking about manager must possess for this leadership continuum and the subordinate characteristics will include subordinate need for independence, readiness to assume responsibility tolerance for ambiguity, interest in the problem and understanding of goals and knowledge. And the third category is situational characteristics that is which affects decision making. What are the situational characteristics? Type of the organization, group effectiveness, problem whether it is complex and simple and time pressures. So all these cater to the situational characteristics when we talk about this continuum of leadership. Let us understand this continuum with the help of this graphic. Here we have understood that subordinates must carry some characteristics and boss or leader also must have certain characteristic. With this particular division in between you can see to it that when subordinate is going to be the leader and when boss is going to be the leader what are different situations since students we are discussing about situational theories or contingency theories here situation plays a major role let us see now as you can see the first situation is manager makes the decision and announces it so that means the subordinate has very little power here to give any kind of say so who is dominating this leadership this leadership is dominated by the leader rather or the boss in the second situation manager sells the decision so here we can see a little bit more empowerment is given to the subordinate but still manager is influencing the subordinate and most of the authority is in the hand of the manager or the boss only or the leader only then the third situation is manager presents ideas and invites questions. So here again manager is keeping everything in his own hands but he is giving little more freedom to the subordinate in order to put up their thoughts in terms of questions only. In the fourth category of situation we can see manager presents tentative decision which is subject to change. So here we are moving towards equality in terms of decision making almost still not there but we are moving towards that scenario where manager can put forth the decision and may ask other alternatives from the uh, subordinates which is purely reflected in the next style or next situation where manager presents the problem and gets the suggestion and then makes the decision. So this is now more of participative style of leadership here you can see the now the magnitude or intensity of contribution of boss is reducing and of subordinate is towards higher side or increasing. 
in the next scenario we are now meeting reaching to a stage where manager defines the limits so what are the limits with respect to resources and timeline they ask the group to make the decisions so here majority of decision making power is in the hands of the subordinate so area of freedom of subordinate is very high here here area of freedom of subordinate is very low manager permits the subordinate to function within limits defined by the superior so here this is the area where huge freedom is given to the uh, to the subordinate so tenenbaum and skinmith through their continuum continuum means a continuous graphic so through this continuum try to make us understand that leadership whether what kind of leadership it is going to be it will depend on the situation so this is situation 1 2 3 and so on we reach on to this seven situations and based on these seven situations we have different styles of leadership or area of freedom for each one of leaders second situational model theory is hershey and blanchard's leadership model now this was given by paul hershey and blanchard the in late 1970s and early 1980s and here they rejected a single best leadership style okay they emphasizes adaptability based on the situation the leadership style will be chosen so there is no leadership style so we may if choose authoritative leadership style because it is required then it is also a good style even if it has dictatorship in into it so effective leadership varies with individual group being led and the specific task or function to be performed so here two elementary concepts in hershey and blanchard's model is there what are the two concepts individual and group maturity level and choosing the right leadership style so two things students you should now understand carefully maturity level of the group member or subordinates we are talking about and right leadership we are talking about on the part of the leader let us try to understand this maturity level of the followers can be m1 m2 m3 and m4 what does it mean m1 leader m1 follower is the one who is unwilling and unable to do the job m2 is the one who is willing but unable to do the job so he has the intention but he lacks the skill to do the job m3 maturity level 3 is that he is able to do the job he has the skill but he doesn't have the intention is missing then m4 is able and willing so this is the star performer who has the intention also and he is willing also to perform so what are the sub categories under this sub categories include lowest maturity level lacks knowledge skill and confidence and requires push and direction to take up the responsibility so they are very lethargic people limited skill but willing to work on task and desire success for completion so they are the one who if given proper training can work properly are able and willing are the ones increase skills and readiness compared to m2 confidence and abilities is still lacking so that needs to be built in the aptitude attitude has to be built in then able and willing have highest maturity level able to work independently very confident strong skills and dedication to the task now we have to talk about two things students maturity level of followers we have done this now we talk about the leadership styles so leadership styles can be first style one is telling telling means authoritative and task oriented you have to tell them what is to be done direction and instruction style 2 is selling providing information and directives to pay people and aims to gain team buy in and commitment so you are trying to get that commitment by giving information and directives third is the participative style of leadership which is relationship oriented and very collaborative for this delegating style of leadership where we empower the team less involvement in decision making and focus on team members independence so now let us collaborate these two with the help of a graphic this is what hershey and blanchard have given that we have a directive behavior from low to high and we have a supportive behavior from low to high and under this we have four different styles of leadership just now we have discussed these styles style 1 is directing style 2 is coaching or selling we also mentioned it as selling style 3 is supportive style and style 4 is delegating style 
Now in style 1 of course what do we see that we have maturity levels which are different as compared to here we have M1 maturity level, here we have M2 maturity level, M3 maturity level and M4 maturity level. So people here are highly mature, we can delegate the task and in this case we do not have to direct them any behavior, low direction. Here we have to give low direction but high support, here people are mature but the attitude has to be bring in, in this leadership style. In this style we have to sell and we have to give some directions and support to the people. While this one is purely authoritative style where we have high direction and high uh, low support behavior. So let us see again this telling and directing leadership style is the one, the first, direct, first leadership style that we talked about maturity level is low. Second selling leadership style maturity level is two, medium with low skill set collaborative or participative leadership style is followed with M3 maturity level of followers that is they have high skill set but medium maturity and fourth that is delegating style of leadership is done with high maturity individuals. So what you have understood students here we have tried to form out that followers have some maturity level we need to assess their maturity level which ranges from M1 to M4 and once we have assessed their maturity level we need to find out what is the suitable leadership style for it telling selling supportive or directive or kind of focused leadership style. Now what is some, some applications of the styles of leadership? Leaders should adapt their style based on maturity level of individuals and the nature of task. So here we can discuss one example. You are about to leave for an extended holiday and you, your task will be handled by an experienced colleague. He is very familiar with your responsibilities and excited to do the job. Instead of trusting his knowledge and skills to do the work, you spend hours creating a detailed list of tasks for which he will be responsible and give full instructions on how to do them. So what is the result? Your work gets done but you have damaged the relationship with your co-worker by your lack of trust. How? He was M4 individual, maturity level 4 individual in maturity yet you used S1 style that is telling management style instead of S4. So in this case what you have done a damage to the relationship with the co-worker. So you need to be very careful while you are devising on that what kind of uh, M, uh, what kind of maturity level exists because of which you should be going for specific style. Another example here for this particular uh, theory is you have just been put in charge of leading a new team. It is your first time working with these people as far as you can tell they have some of the required skills to reach the department's goals but not all of them. The good news is that they are excited and keen to do the work. You guess they are at maturity level 3. So you use the matching S3 leadership style. What was it? It was supportive leadership style because maturity level 3 says medium maturity but high skill set. So you, are, you train them through the project goals, pushing and teaching where required but mostly leaving them to make their own decisions. So as a result their relationship with you will be standard and the team is successful. So these are the practical examples of how you can use the maturity level to choose the leadership style. The third theory of leadership is about Fedler's work. Fedler identified whether an individual's leadership style is either relationship oriented or task oriented. Students you need to focus now very hard since it is a little critical theory to understand. There are two dimensions in Fedler's theory. What are these two dimensions which just now we saw either relationship orientation or task orientation. What is leadership uh, style here? Leadership style is least preferred co-worker relationship oriented or task oriented. So what do, do we mean by least preferred co-worker? Someone whom you are with whom you do not work to, want to work. So he is a least preferred co-worker. So with this kind of individuals working with you, what leadership orientation will you go for relationship or task orientation? And the second parameter in this Fedler's model is situational favorableness. So situation could be either favorable or situation can be unfavorable for the leaders. And 
how it can be favorable or unfavorable there are three dimensions to it which we shall be understanding soon. But before I move on to these three dimensions which I shall mention we let us see the least preferred co-worker scale given by Fedler. In least preferred co-worker scale Fedler gave us these parameters ranging from 1 to 8 meaning from low to high value where these parameters were contradictory to each other like unpleasant and pleasant or tense and relaxed or quarrelsome or harmonious or untrustworthy to trust. So, these are the characteristics of the co-worker which need to be assessed. So, people who are administering this particular scale will give some value to their co-worker like I am putting some values here. So, based on what kind of individuals they are and after these values have been marked based on these parameters characteristics of a co-worker which can be from unpleasant to pleasant we get a score. So, your final score total will be the numbers you circled on the 18 scales. So, total of the numbers total of these numbers would be the one which are being marked. Now, if you get 57 or less then you are a low least preferred co-worker. Low least preferred co-worker means you will focus on the task more. 58 to 63 is middle LPC. So, you are socio independent leader self directed and not overly concerned with task or with how others view them. 64 and above means you are high least preferred co-worker motivated by relationship. We shall be discussing this in detail to make you understand do not worry in case you still have some doubts related to this theory. Now, I told you there are three variables in the situation in the beginning these ones function of three dimensions situational favorableness or unfavorableness. So, whether the situation will be in our favor or whether it will be unfavorable for us it will be dependent on three particular dimensions. First dimension is leader member relationship, employees acceptability of the leader. So, we can assume here leader member relationship can be very highly positive or can be very negative or not so good. So, similarly task structure detailed job description of the subordinate task structure also can be well defined or can, may not be properly defined. Similarly, position power, formal authority possessed by a leader in the organization. So, what is the position power? Is it high position power that the person carries that is he is managing director or CEO of the organization or low position power that he is just an assistant manager or maybe a small generalist in the organization. So, based on these three dimensions either the situation will be favorable for us or the situation will be unfavorable for us. Now, let me explain this in detail to you with the help of this graphic. So, just now what I have explained to you favorableness of the situation, situation can be favorable, situation can be unfavorable. Now, then contingency variables for this situation is leader member relationship leader member relationship can be good can be bad this is situational variables task structure can be highly structured task lowly structured task task similarly in bad situations also or bad member relationship it can be high and low position power of the leader can be strong or can be weak so let us try to see what all permutation combinations are or can be drawn we are talking about a situation a situation where leader membership relationship is good and task structure is highly defined very crystal clear rules regulations norms standardization is being given and the position power of this person is very strong. So, he is a managing director task is very clear relationship is very good. So, that means in this scenario we have most favorable situation with most favorable situation appropriate leader behavior will be that he should be task oriented person, he should focus on the task. The second situation is that leader member relationship is good, but 
task structure is also high but the position power of the manager is weak so weak position power is he is not md he is the assistant manager in the organization then also it is a favorable situation because we have two parameters in our hands thus the person or the leader can go for task orientation the third situation is leader member relationship is good they are very amicable and happily uh, friendly with each other task structure is lowly defined it is not very clear what is to be done or how it is to be done but the position power of the leader is very high he is managing director of the organization again it is most favorable because two of the parameters are in our positive connotation so it's a favorable situation and person will or a leader will go for task orientation the next situation is the relationship is good task structure is not defined properly and the position power is very weak so he is the assistant manager here we have two parameters which are not in our favor so thus we are having a moderately favorable situation in moderately favorable situation we go for relationship orientation so because your position power is weak and task is also not defined but your relationships are good then you can think of having a relationship orientation and get the work done on the basis of your positive relation with your subordinate then only he will work now the next scenario coming up is the bad leader member relationship so it's not good it is not in our favor at all but the task structure is highly defined it is already there in the manual and you need not see to it that how you have to work and the position power is managing director it's very strong in this case also we have a moderately moderately favorable situation why you may not be in talking terms with each other but the position power is high and task is very well defined so you can go for relationship oriented leadership style in the next category relationship is bad task is highly defined and you are also very weak so even in this case it is moderately favorable because we have highly defined task structure so you can think of developing some good relationship with the individuals and hence you may lead to getting the work done the last quadrant talks about something which is not favorable at all most unfavorable situation what is most unfavorable to situation you are not in talking terms with your boss task structure is not clearly defined your subordinate doesn't know what is to be done though you are a strong individual you are at a strong position but still because these two are not in our favor it is most unfavorable situation and manager leaders have to work again in task orientation when they are in most unfavorable situation and lastly the most worst scenario is when relationship is not good task is not properly defined and your position power as a leader is also weak so this is most unfavorable situation in this case also task orientation will play a role so what is important here is that we need to identify when a leader will go for task orientation or will go for relationship orientation so we have identified when the situation is most favorable we go for task orientation and when the situation is again most unfavorable we go for task orientation in the situation of moderate favorableness we go for relationship orientation is that clear students now moving further talking about effectiveness of leadership styles optimum leadership styles and relationship oriented leadership styles so what is effectiveness of leadership style here fedler asserts that a task oriented leadership style is generally more effective than a relationship oriented one when it comes to relationship oriented leadership style considers leadership is suitable for moderately moderate favorable conditions so this is what federal has inferred and opt what is the optimum leadership style he says that appropriate leadership style will based on the situational favorability so this is a take away from the fedler's style of leadership so there is an example rani with an lpc score of 98 is motivated by relationship 98 which is higher than 64 which the decoding of scale we did 
leading to a cultural committee with no control tasked with implementing a new policy. So, leader member relationship here is good, task structure is low, first time decision he has, she has to take since this uh, leading a cultural committee with no control and tasked with implementing a new policy. She has to come up with a new policy, she does not have a control over the group. The task structure is low, it is a first time decision. Positional power is very weak because no authority or reward for uh, authority to give reward or punishment is with Rani. So, what is her scenario? Her scenario is leader member relationship is only good, rest two are low and weak. So, Rani is expected to leverage her strong relationship that she possesses with the members to build trust and motivate them despite the challenging in task structure and positional power. So, this is how we try to interpret on what is to be done as a leader in certain LPC score. Then we come on to path goal theory. Path goal theory is basically uh, was developed by Robert House in 1971 and the principle of path goal theory is a leader's action directly influence team members approval, enthusiasm and performance. Leader adapts their path to complete subordinates ability and compensate for deficiency. The manager's role here is to aid the team members in achieving the goals. The term path goal theory itself suggests us that we need to go for some kind of direction. We have to give uh, the path to achieve the goal to the subordinates. So, it is based on four leadership styles. Let us see them quickly. Directive path leadership clarifying it, which is more of giving instructions. Achievement oriented is giving confidence in the employee's ability, participative is giving getting consultation and supportive is to show concern towards group psychological well-being. So, variables in leader behavior outcome relationship. So, we have two variables here environment and group characteristics. Environmental characteristics is determines leader behavior based on maximizing group outcomes while group characteristic is focus on control and experience. Now, moving further next is leader member exchange theory. This theory focuses on nature of relationship between managers and team members. So, this is a didactic, dyadic relationship. So, what is a dyadic relationship? It, this exchange theory defines relationship between managers and team members. How it defines this relationship? The first stage in defining relationship is role taking where members join the team and leaders assess their skills. After role taking is role making where roles are created and members work harder to commit. Trust is very important here. The third stage now within this role making we have in group and out group members. Who are in group members? They have greater roles and responsibility and commitment to team goals. While out group members are the ones who fall out of the group because they are having some kind of mistrust and they receive fewer valued resources. So, in group and out group members are there and develop during the role making time. After this comes routinization, the last fair where stability too is attained and processes become more structured in comparison to organization variables. Now, in routinization, in group members work to maintain good relationships and out group members may exhibit hostility and irony because they have not been involved in the task. And finally, leader member exchange theory has some connotation towards group organizational effectiveness. It directly contributes to it by considering leaders, members, groups and organization success as interconnected elements. So, all elements since are interconnected, thus this theory contributes towards organizational effectiveness. Coming on to Virom Yetin contingency model which was proposed by uh, Yetin and Viron, it is the most effective style depends on the current environment or the situation. This is the pretext of Virom's Yetin contingency model. So, Virom identified five leadership styles ranging from autocratic to group based. First style was leader makes their own decision based on information available. So, the first situation is information is available. So, they are making their decision. Second is information is collected by leader from the followers, but decision making lies with leader in general. So, here information is taken from the in the style 2 it is taken from the follower. In consultative style leader shares the problem with the group and takes the views and opinions individually from the paper, people. Here followers do not meet and discuss the possibilities rather their contribution is only put into the suggestions. 
In the consultative style 2, members meet each other to discuss their ideas and alternatives which was consultative style 1 but in 2 it is upon the leader who makes the decision alone and which may may not reflect the members thought process. And final group based style of leadership it involves implementing ideas and opinions of the members or the followers based on the group through brainstorming, grip decision making and it tends to be the final decision. So students we have discussed various theories of leadership uh, today ranging from trait, behavioral and contingency theories out of which uh, the, the behavioral theories were of three types. What were those? We discussed Ohio State and then we discussed the grid by Blake and Mountain and Likert management system. And when we talked about contingency theories we discussed ranging from Hershey and Blanchard's continuum and then we also discussed about Fedler's leadership theory to the leadership management exchange theory etc. So I believe you have understood all these theories they are going to be of utmost importance in your careers because tomorrow when you become leaders you need to know what are specific traits, situations or behaviors that you need to mold in your own manner, traits that you may have to acquire, behavior that you may need to get trained in and situations that you need to turn into favorable or unfavorable as the case may be, you have to deal with them and take the strategic moves ahead. So this is all from my side for leadership, this is the bibliography that I have referred for this particular session, you may also look into this for further readings and I wish a big thank you to you all for listening to me.